When I say the word posset, you probably think of a cute little forest animal like this guy, you know, who's half possum and half rabbit, a relative of the jackalope, or maybe of Napoleon Dynamite's famous liger. But a posset is actually an old English dessert, and today Tim's gonna show us how to make one. Aren't you, Tim? I've gotta <laughs> say, your puppeteering skills are on point today. Oh, Julia. thank you, yeah, this is Miss Posset. Hi, Miss Posset. <laughs> Unfortunately, majestic rodents have nothing to do with what we're doing oh, today. Sorry, Miss Posset. I'm gonna set you over here so you can just watch us for a while. Let's get right into it. So a chilled posset, that's a chilled dessert, something between a mousse and a pudding. Mm. It's got a super plush, super creamy, really satisfying texture. And it's only got three ingredients. Three ingredients. Yeah, let's break it down. So we've got two cups of heavy cream here into this sauce pot. We've got two thirds of a cup of sugar and just a tablespoon of lemon zest. Now we wanna bring this to a rolling boil over medium heat. I'm gonna give it a nice little stir to get everything dispersed. Now the amount of sugar here turns out to be crucial. You know when you mix sugar and water, it gets syrupy, mm -hmm. it gets nice and tacky? Yeah, it almost turns into glue. And the more sugar you add, the tackier and more viscous it gets. Mm -hmm. It's the same deal here. It's contributing to that nice, firm set. All right, so the sugar amount really helps determine how set this final custard will be. And we found that the less sugar we put in, the thinner and looser our dessert ended up. Now we're at a good point here. We're at a rolling boil. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna let this ride for about eight to 12 minutes. We're looking to reduce this to exactly two cups. And that's doing a couple things here. First, you've got that crazy, vigorous boiling action. That's breaking apart the bigger fat droplets in the cream. So you end up with a smoother, more velvety texture overall. Second, and I think more importantly, is that you're reducing. So you're driving off extra water in the mix by evaporation and contributes to a firmer set. That also means that we can add more lemon juice later, so we'll have more lemon flavor in the finished product. Now to get this right, we have to use a liquid measuring cup to make sure we nail two cups exactly by volume. All right. There are times in life when you can just wing it. You can cook from your heart. And <laughs> I love doing that. But this, this is not one of those times. This is like science. Precision is key. All right. So we're gonna measure this out. So when you're making this, if nailing that two cups is so important, that means you're probably doing this periodically as it cooks so you know how close you're getting. Yes. You nailed it. I mean, I'm getting down looking at that line. You are at exactly two cups. You know, I had an old pastry chef who used to say, there's no substitute for precision and perfect execution. Oh, so it's like working here. He also said, there's no substitute for butter. <laughs> I like that guy. We're gonna pour this right back into the pot. I've killed the heat at this point, and I'm gonna add six tablespoons of lemon juice. Now this provides good acidity without being too harsh, and it plays well with the sweetness of the dish. All right, so that lemon juice is not only for flavor, but again, it's gonna help that cream turn into a rich custardy dessert. We give it a little stir, and we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. So it's been about 20 minutes. You got this gnarly looking little skin on oh, top. Oh yeah. That probably wouldn't taste so smooth if it was in the final posset. Yeah, it doesn't eat very well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna strain all this out. Now when you're straining this out, you don't wanna press too hard on the solids. You don't wanna go to town on it. You don't want all of that skin to end up in the final dessert. Now we're ready to portion this out. I've got six four ounce ramekins. Now portioning, it turns out, is really important. You can't just pour all this out into one big bowl and let it set. The consistency isn't even. And you don't wanna overfill when you fill these, otherwise you're not gonna fill all of them. So go scant at first, then you can fill them in as you go. Pour, pour, pour. That's pretty even. And we've got a little excess. We can top off some of these. Looks good to me. Yeah, we can give a little check and see if it's even. You all are about the precision, aren't you? That's right. These kind of things, like these bubbles that you see, like here and there, oh, yeah. that really gets to me. It so does. One little quick tip is that you can take the whole sheet tray and just lightly tap it, and a lot of those bubbles will go away, just like that. Oh, so the bubbles kind of come to the surface with every little tap. That's right. So these are gonna chill for at least three hours till they're nice and set and firm. And once they're chilled, we can wrap them individually and they'll store well for up to two days. So these are nicely chilled. They're nice, set, and firm. And we've let them hang out at room temperature for about 10 minutes to temper. Are you ready to eat? I am. We're gonna go ahead and garnish these simply with blueberries. It just provides nice textural contrast. I can dig in? Yeah, let's go for it. 
Oh, you know, this it's thicker than a pudding, but it's thinner than a mousse. Yeah. Mmm. That's good. Super creamy. It's creamy, it's got a lot of lemon flavor, and it just has a nice balance of sweetness. It's a super simple recipe, just relies on precision and timing. So a posset is not a mythical rodent, but it is an easy and elegant dessert. And to make the posset, you simply boil heavy cream along with some sugar and lemon zest until it measures exactly two cups. Then add lemon juice and let the mixture sit for 20 minutes before straining it into ramekins. Then into the fridge it goes for about three hours to set up. So there you have it, from the test kitchen to your kitchen, a brand new recipe for lemon posset. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.